You, my love, are the most crystal clear molecules of hydrogen and oxygen I've ever seen. Yeah, I was trying to woo my water. That's because there's an idea out there that our actual thoughts projected on water molecules can affect them positively or negatively. This is an idea from Dr. Masaru Emoto, who had a bunch of experiments on the cellular structure of water. And this became widely known in the film, What the Bleep Do We Know? In his studies, Emoto filled 100 Petri dishes with water and doused them with either good vibes or really bad vibes. Then he froze the Petri dishes and looked at them under a microscope. He reported that the ice crystals that had a bunch of positive thoughts were much more aesthetically pleasing and symmetrical and kind of have these snowflake structures. But the ones that had like really bummer thoughts, they were jagged, asymmetrical, and dull looking. <sighs> Amazing, right? Proof that mere thoughts could transform the physical world. Well, except that no scientist could reproduce Emoto's results. First off, Emoto's experiments weren't considered very rigorous. They lacked basic scientific controls. Second, contaminants can easily change the structures of ice crystals. And third, the formation of ice crystals can really vary widely depending on the cooling rate of the water. But hey, why would we exalt water to the mystical realm in the first place? Our ideas about water and cleanliness have undergone quite a change over the centuries. Not only is access to clean water a relatively new thing in human history, but that we should obsessively cleanse ourselves with it is a really modern concept too. According to Stephen Johnson in his book, How We Got to Now, Six Innovations That Changed the World, as a child, Louis XIII of France was not bathed once until he was seven years old. This is how people rolled in the 1600s. Even if they were royalty and they had a couple of servants to bathe them, they were like, nah, I'm good. That is until we humans began to associate morality with hardcore cleanliness. Oh, and we had a plumbing infrastructure free of diseased water to plunge ourselves into. That, that is key. Fast forward to today and you see that the humble liquid is being bottled and distributed with claims of magical vitamin properties. Provenance becomes a really big deal too. You never see water bottles claiming that they came from some murky lake. No, the water came up from on high, gathered at a glacial spring, never having to soil itself with a descent down the mountain to where mere mortals dwell. But the truth is that water, no matter where it hails from, has at some point made contact with trace amounts of poo. Think of all the species that ever existed in the entire history of the world and the millions of tons of dinosaur poo produced every single day during the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. That as well as leaf litter, decomposing animals and insects make up a good amount of the layers of soil. And a river runs through that soil. The water you get from your faucet, well, it comes from two different places. Lakes or rivers, that's surface water, or from wells, that's groundwater collected in aquifers. It gets treated and then put into the potable water supply. In fact, some areas use recycled wastewater. That's right, water from the poopy tubes of the sewer systems. It's cleaned, it's treated, and then it's used as tap water, which is great, right? Especially in drought-stricken areas. Except that some people cannot get over the whole toilet to tap thing, or what we call the yuck factor. Regardless of whether or not we're making mental love to our water, if we're screaming at it, or if we just can't get our minds around the fact that the next drop of water may have once tangled with a little bit of fecal matter, there remains means an unsung hero of the water world and his name is John Leal. In Stephen Johnson's book and PBS series How We Got to Now, he points out that we owe our clean drinking water to physician John Leal, who surreptitiously tested his theory that chlorine could make water safe to drink by then adding it to Jersey City's water supply in the early 1900s. In doing so, he cut the infant and child mortality rate in half over a 30-year period. Not to mention making public swimming pools a reality and the everybody out of the pool, we have an AFR alert. An accidental fecal release, which kind of brings it all full circle. Hey, all you lifeguards and former lifeguards out there, let us know about your AFR incidents in the comments below. And to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.